common thing that i always hear when people um they'll say like get shoulder pain or elbow issue and then they stop moving in general well you can still move your lower extremities still work so like don't stop working out don't stop going to the gym don't stop doing everything because your elbow what about your legs you can still go for a walk you can still work your legs um or vice versa if someone hurts their knee you can still do other stuff with your arms as well so never stop moving um, and find something that you enjoy doing that uh, that 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 helps you to move and be intentional about moving every day. Be intentional right? about just finding ways to move and just create it. Get your heart rate up regularly. Many of us know the feeling of tight shoulders, sore back, and tense jaw that come from long hours working at a computer. In this age of virtual or hybrid work, it's all too common. What can we do to keep our body healthy while working or while living? Today's guest, Emil Clark, is here to tell us his best secrets for working and moving to reduce discomfort and pain. Emil Clark is a certified ergonomic specialist with an extensive background in outpatient physical therapy and corrective exercise. He has helped more than 6,000 clients reduce their risk of injury and improve their overall functional fitness. His specialty is in office, vehicle, healthcare, and industrial ergonomics and injury prevention. Don't miss this enlightening conversation with Emil that will help you better understand how to optimize your ergonomics while working or just living overall, and how to move your body to prevent and reduce pain and optimize your health. Well, thank you, Emil, for coming on today. Welcome, and uh, we're so glad to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm excited. So uh, you work with, he's our doctor of physical therapy here, and you have your own ergonomics practice as well, but I'd love to kind of go first uh, broadly uh, Neil, about what motivated you to become a physical therapy assistant and certified ergonomics specialist. Awesome. So, um, so uh, I guess let's go further back. So I've always, since I was a kid, I've always like, loved muscles and bones and movement. That's always been my thing. I did play some sports, um, but I just, just always love muscles and bones. Like I always find that so interesting, right? You got a bunch of levers and pulleys, um, so it was, it was just extremely interesting. So I knew I wanted to do something related to movement um, in that sense. Uh, so yeah, went to school, went to Towson University, graduated, did some exercise science work, um, and then worked in the fitness industry for years. Um, I worked for some of the top gyms. I was a manager at Valley's and did a lot of stuff in fitness. Um, and then I just kind of got tired of the random schedules. <laughs> um, like you might have a, a client in the morning and then late afternoon. It was just all over the place. Um, so I wanted to stay around muscles and bones, but at the same time, I didn't want, want something more stable than, um, than personal training. So that's when I went back, got my physical therapist assistant license, and then a whole bunch of other certifications and, uh, and movement, um, advanced therapeutic exercise specialist and, um, kinesio taping and a bunch of other certs. Um, yeah. And that's how I, uh, end up uh, going back and, and went that direction. As far as the ergonomic side of things, one of my clinical affiliations, um, I, uh, I shadowed or I did it. It was like a six week affiliation and I got to a work behind a, uh, an ergonomics, uh, specialist, uh, and she actually owned the whole, her whole, her ergonomics business. It was one of the, the largest ones in this area. So I was a right side person, uh, for six weeks, which was an amazing experience. Um, so yeah, so I went and got that and uh, she was actually a, a, a therapist also. So yeah, so did that. And then I, I just loved it. I loved the, uh, um, figuring out how to help people, how to serve people. Um, so obviously with ergonomics, you, like with physical therapy, right? We is more proactive. I'm sorry, it's more reactive, right? After someone gets injured, but like more ergonomics is more kind of reactive, right? So like, how do you avoid people from getting hurt in the first place? Was like, and I'm sure we'll get into that. But how do you avoid getting hurt in the first place? And then, um, and obviously, if someone does uh, get better from physical therapy, but they're going back to the exact same environment, then it's like you're undoing everything, right? So yeah, so that's in a nutshell how I got to where I am. Thanks, Emil. And I think, like you said in the beginning, healthy muscles and bones, it's really a foundation. One of the big foundations of health is, is structural health. You know, if you have a good structure and we talk in biology about structure and function, you know, if someone has a good structure, then their cells, their organs, their tissues are going to be more functional as well. They're going to perform better. I'd love to hear your story of, of um, a little bit deeper into how you got into like healthy muscles and bones. Was it something that happened as a child? Did you like certain sports? Was it a family kind of thing or? 
Yeah, so so I played like some basketball, um, and I I I mean, and anyone who play basketball knows you're gonna have a lot of ankle yes. rolling. You're gonna have a lot yes. of like it just hurt a bunch of different things. Um, now I can't play as much. I'm 36 now, um, so every time I play, I hurt something, and so it's like I had to retire. But uh, so it was just always interesting. So like when I'm watching sports, like when I'm watching basketball and watching these things, I would I'm paying more attention to how people are landing after they jump. I'm paying more attention into like the mechanics of it um and so i was always so interested in like what the body is doing and just the physiology of these athletes how amazing they are like their cardiorespiratory health is like advanced they're like superhumans they're literally superhumans pro athletes like their body are capable of doing things that the average person can't do not only strength but flexibility range of motion is all these little things that make them such phenomenal athletes right people don't don't see all this behind the scenes um, um things that they're doing so yeah so that i always find that extremely interesting so superheroes you know we're, we're you know now this is the era of a lot of marvel movies you know and everything um do you feel like everyone has the potential to optimize their bone and muscle health and become their own superheroes i do i absolutely do um and uh like one of the things that i always do with my patients and my clients is just uh to get them to understand what is your peak kind of your, your peak condition Right. So like the last day that you had a really good day that you knocked out a lot of things like like in your in your day to day life. Right. Whether it be you is extremely productive. Like what were the conditions? Right. So like that, that you did. So I know for me, like sleep is very important. Like so like the days that I'm most productive is the days that I get good sleep. Um, obviously, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. Um, if I start my day with some movement, some pull-ups, some, some type of exercise, just to kind of get some control of my day. If I do those things in the morning, so sleep, proper nutrition, and some movement in the morning, like I, I have so much more energy and I'm able to function at a high level and get a lot of the things that I want to do. My brain is so much more clear. I just feel overall better. So I think it's, it's just important to, to, to try to exist in your, in your peak state. Right. So like try to try to be a best version of yourself every day so that you can uh, just be as productive as possible. So and having that morning routine is really one of the keys to having that that peak state. You know, we just also talked um, with a, a guest about how um, basically um, repetition and, and rituals like routines create resilience. So I think we can say that both, you know, mental, emotional resilience, but also physical resilience. The body will, will last longer and, and be healthier if we have that routine down. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree. That's why it's important to try to wake up at the same time every yeah. day <laughs> and yeah. try to try to, as opposed to being all over the place. I know I'm, it's hard for me, I know, but I, I really try to, because some days I have a patient at like 7 a.m. Some days I don't have a patient until like 9 a.m., but still to try to get up at the same time every day because you want to hit that snooze, you want to stay back longer, but like it's important to kind of get that good circadian rhythm um, to get up at the same time every day. So would you say, would you say even as a PT assistant and ergonomic specialist that that uh, movement also will be influenced by your routine, right, as well? Absolutely. Yeah. So movement is definitely, uh, I would definitely say that. Uh, and let's talk about, Emil, what kind of conditions overall you work with most often, because people might be wondering, like, what, what is it exactly that you, you like to do or like to specialize in? Awesome. So, um, so the majority of my clients, well, I, let's start, I guess, with ergonomics. Um, so the majority of, so I specialize in several different um, areas. So first of all, like office ergonomics is probably like what I've done most of my work in. So I've probably done over 6,000 assessments. Um, so different things like, um, so if someone is having chronic pain at work, but they don't have pain when they're not at work, right? So that means there's something in the work environment that they're doing that could be causing that discomfort. So what I do, I go in and assess, I observe them, see what they're doing, I interview and see what are the repetitive things that you're doing, right? So ergonomics, when it, it's more, a lot of these injuries happens from repetition and frequency, right? So free, or I'm sorry, frequency and duration right of, of of certain things so for example um if if your monitor is too low or if your monitor is too high or if your chair back is unlocked right then you're not getting that proper back support a lot of people don't know like that puts more stress on your back um if your feet are floating 
right? So like if you're sitting down and you don't have lumbar support for the more shorter people, um, if your feet aren't touching the ground, that could put a lot of stress on your back. Is these things that people just don't think about if you're referring to a lot of documents. For, so if um, your your job has you refer to a lot of paper documents, but you're putting it flat on the table and you're constantly doing this, right? So that that repetition over and over and over can kind of cause strain in your neck when I, all you need is a document holder, something to angle the document so that you can keep your neck neutral and view that document. It's all these little things. Um, if someone is using the phone a lot, like I work with a lot of administrative people um, who are using the phone often and they're cradling the phone like this and it's giving them neck issues, um, that could cause a problem. If someone wears progressive or bifocals lenses as opposed to like regular lenses, so a lot of people don't know, but these people need to keep their monitors lower, right? And the reason for that is because the lower half of your lens is um, is uh, is uh, is more for like reading and close up viewing, right? So a lot of times I'll do an assessment and I'll go in and I'm observing the uh, the, the employee or patient and they're doing this. And I said, let me guess you have progressive lenses. And they're like, well, yeah, how did you know? I said, you had the typical sign. And they'll say, I don't know, Emil, like for some reason my neck just hurts every day. Like, and I'm looking at them like this, and I'm like, yes. And then I'll send a picture and I'll take a picture and show them. I said, you're looking up all day long. And that might seem like something so small, but after nine hours of you looking up, just that little small change in your angle over such a long period of time can cause problems. So anyway, in the office setting, that's what I'll do, chair fittings, um, kind of decreasing any ergonomic risk. And then the, uh, as far as like in the industrial setting and healthcare, like I help to lower workers' compensation cases. So like any um, position, almost like industrial hygienist, that's another title for what I do in that, in, that, in that setting. So a lot of nurses, they hurt their back, for example. So I do lifting clinics, show nurses how to move better, how to lift better, um, give them stretches that they can do. Um, also, we not management. I might not need to make some changes as well to uh, to kind of decrease strain. So, how do you lower chances of people getting hurt at work? Um, and then in the industrial setting, there's a lot of different things that you can do to adding different tools to decrease grip changing and grip strength. So, there's a lot of tools that people aren't aware of um, that can help to lower injuries as well. And we still need to have you come in here, I think, and do a whole office assessment. I don't think we've done that yet, but um, we know that. You, or you have done some here a little, a, a little bit at the front, but it'd be great to do that for everyone here. I think if you look at this, um, you know, working and, you know, sitting down using the computers a lot and, and probably, like you said, repetitive um, motions, you know, over and over day by day, and that, that frequency and duration will end up causing a lot of, a lot of injuries. What, what, what are the typical, let's say for ergonomics, and then I do want to get into other things that you do, but um, ergonomics wise, what are the typical body cues that we might experience if the workspace is not optimal? Yeah, so some of the most common things that I'll see, like probably by far the most common issue that people have is like tightness in their shoulders, right? And their neck and the traps um, and also between their scapula. And that's because people, have, so many of us have such poor posture, right? So like if you're here in front of a computer all the time, gravity is going to automatically want to pull you down here, right? And especially now, if you're working from a laptop, that is probably, by the way, so that's a big gem I want to give um, uh, people. So if you work from home using a laptop, that is literally one of the most stressful things you can do to your body. That's probably the most common things that I've seen since so many people started working from home during the pandemic. Like just working from a laptop and doing this all day long, excuse me, that puts a lot of stress and strain on your back because you're, you're either trying to find that horizon. So you're always kind of looking down like this, right? So what's better, raise your laptop. You can put it on a shoebox. You can put it on a laptop stand, something so where you're looking straight ahead and then put the out your, your keyboard and mouse should be on your table. So you want to look straight ahead, keyboard and mouse on the table. Um, and, uh, and if you do work from home, um, get a designated workstation, right? So uh, I've seen a lot of people just create makeshift stations um, since they started working from home at the kitchen table or working from their bed or just working from this area. So if you're gonna continue to work from home um, at least two, three, four days a week, get an actual desk, a chair, um, an actual like full setup. Because uh, if you're just kind of doing these little work uh, makeshift stations, that puts a lot of strain on your body over time. Um, I got away from your question. What was the question again? No, I think I think basically you were saying um, specific body cues or symptoms. I think you said upper back and neck pain. Are there any other symptoms that you would say are very common in this situation with ergonomic imbalance? Absolutely. Um, 
carpal tunnel, a lot of hand and wrist problems. Um, that happens a lot of times. I'll see carpal tunnel injuries from um, like uh, like the wrist rest. You know the little gel wrist rest that mm -hmm. a lot of us have. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wish I had one. But like a lot of times, you have like the flat. Um, I guess the flat little foam thing, and then you have the little like cushion at the top, right? Of uh, the wrist rest. But a lot of people they'll rest their wrist yeah. on it, right? When yeah. and that puts a lot of compression on that median nerve, right? Uh, and so, and so over time, that can actually damage the nerve, and you get carpal tunnel. That's probably one of the most common reasons people get carpal tunnel because from typing and then and then twisting their wrist and not using the ergonomic keyboard, um, or just twisting their wrist in some type of way. So when you, if you are going to use one of those palm, one of those gel wrist rests, you want to actually keep your mouse close to it so that. Um, and if it's like this, you want to keep the, the mouse close to it so that that median nerve can still flow on under, go underneath. Right. So uh, it's kind of hard to, to demonstrate right now, but yeah, so keep the, you don't want to press that wrist, keep your wrist on that gel part. You want to yeah, use to keep your palm on the, the median yeah. nerve. Yes. Yeah. So that's a common one. Um, also like if your desk is too low in relation to your table, so then the, um, the edge of the table is pressing on your, right, the corner edge of the table, and if your keyboard is further back, it's pressing on that area again. So that can cause a lot of, um, like, carpal tunnel issues and so forth. So you want to get an ergonomic keyboard or ergonomic mouse, and there's a lot of different ones um, that you can recommend. But I'll say the most common things I'll see is neck problems, back discomfort, and um, hand and wrist issues. And to get a good idea of is this coming from your workstation, think about it like, are you still having these same issues when you're not doing not, when you're not working? Right. So that's how you can isolate it to that to, to specifically come from something in your work environment. I think I think headaches, too. Have you have you seen because we know that there's referred pain up up the head and that can back to that. That can be one, too, um, that I've seen. Um, let's talk about. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, sorry to cut you off. As far as headaches also, mm -hmm. um, a couple of other common things that I've noticed with headaches, if your eyes are dry, so you might, okay. Um, okay. When, um, so that can cause a lot of eye strain. If the font is too small, it strains your eyes. So then you want to do like a control shortcut and zoom it big. That'll do it too. And then also the lighting positioning. So like if you, if, um, for example, if my window right here was open and the light and the sunlight is right behind my uh I, um, on my laptop and giving me glare that I've seen a lot of times that cause headaches or if the if the light source is behind my, my monitor and then um and there's a there's a there's a um, window behind here then the, again that that lighting can cause a lot of irritation too it's best to have the light source coming from okay. my, the angle from the side okay. so like if, if I'm in a if I'm in my office so then the 90. window okay, should be to it. the side at a 90 degree. 90. Okay, um, yeah, so that, so that it does, so there's, there's no glare. You never want to have glare in your screen because that's another common source of headaches. Got it. Okay, in interesting. Um, I, I just had a, a deeper question about about work in general. Are we are we sitting too much? You know, are we working too much at our at our laptops or desktops or whatever? Yep, that's a great question. So I get that I get that one often. So. And people always say, oh, it's sitting in the new smoke in and so forth. Uh, so what a lot of people don't know is that standing is actually a sedentary posture as well. So sitting too much or just standing too much in one spot is a sedentary posture as well. Sedentary just means that sedentary just means you're not moving, right? So what's best to do is, uh, is to move every hour. So try to get up and move, right? So change position and move every hour. A couple of tips to people who are best with it, they have some type of reminder. Because, you know, like when you get stuck into work and you're typing, it's like that hour or two goes by like this. So um, so the ones that I like for Android is called um, Break Reminder. It's an app that you can get. And then for iPhone, it's called Stand Up. And so it's just really easy. You can automate it, set it, say Monday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Just give, just alert me or chime me every 45 minutes. And then once you hear that beep, just get up for a couple of minutes, do some shoulder rolls, maybe do a short walk, um, and then you come back and go to work. Um, or smartwatches that will do the same thing. They'll have a sedentary reminder. Most, most smartwatches. The one I got on Amazon is like $60. So you don't have to go get a eight hundred dollar apple watch just something that has a reminder to get up and move every hour because again as human beings we're, we're made to move we're not made to stay still right so so yeah so it's, that's why i always try to explain people they because they always want to go and get a standing station i said just understand it's good to be able to alternate between sitting and standing but you still as human beings are made to move right motion is lotion 
right? You want to move, lubricate those joints, right? Get that, get that blood flow, that circulation I love that. moving. I'm gonna use that if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, motion is lotion. Motion is lotion. Yeah, the best lotion you can have, right? Internal lotion. That's it. Movement. You and, only and get one, uh, one body. Um, it's almost like a car, right? If you're not uh getting your oil change, right? You got these parts that have to rub against each other. If you're not getting the oil change and you're tune up, then it's gonna start to break down. Well, only thing was you're stuck with this vehicle for the rest of your life. You only get one of them. You better be right. good. That's right. It. Right. Can't can't really replace it. Um, the 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 other thing is that blood flow. You know, the cells, like all of our tissues, everything's dynamic in the body. It doesn't seem like it because we can't see that, but all these cells and all these, you know, tissues and blood are moving so quickly throughout our bodies. So we're moving even if we don't think we're moving. I think if we, if we kind of move, um, like you said, it's not really about sitting versus standing. It's really about moving versus not moving and, and moving, you know, at least every hour, like you said, is really good advice. I feel like it's very hard to remember sometimes about that um, when you get kind of caught into like what you're doing throughout the day. Um, what do you think about having kind of a community approach and having people kind of do movement together. Like I know sometimes we've been trying to do jumping jacks here at the front desk and that's been, that's been pretty fun. I love it. And what I, another thing I've seen like in the office space, people will have um, walking meetings, right? Oh, nice. So yeah. they'll, they'll take walking yeah. meetings and, um, and like they'll, they'll, like the whole group, they'll go out for a walk um, outside yeah. for a walk and they take that meeting. So that's been pretty cool to see that. Um, and they just take moving breaks. Yeah. So so sometimes like uh, office spaces will have a movement champion um, and the person is just to stand up and then someone leads it every week. They do some shoulder rolls and there's like different stretches that you can do. Um, and if anyone is interested, it can I can you, can you can definitely reach out and I can give you some kind of like daily stretches. But like there's certain things that you want to do to just kind of calm that the effects of sitting all day so like right stretch out your wrist you want to stretch out your scapula your shoulder blades because those are the ones that get tight um stretch out your hips so there's a lot of different things you can do to, to just combat the effects of sitting all day stretch your hip flexors the hip flexors should be stretched almost daily so that's another one that people don't stretch their hips because if you're always seated in a short position your, your hip flex are always in a shortened position um and you try to stand up and then again you get that like that, like can increase that lower doses and you can add to back pain so yeah. you want to definitely make sure that you're stretching and moving um often um another point that i wanted to make sure i hit um for for those that work from home um specifically you're going to be at higher risk of a lot of different issues and i've seen a lot of things happen in uh over the last couple of years, so since so many people have been working from home, there's been a lot of increase in um, orthopedic conditions and a lot of health issues just because they're supposed to get 10,000 steps a day, ideally, right? That's what the kind of CDC recommends. But people who work from home get like, get half as many steps as people who work in the office, hmm. right? So I think it's really important because a lot of people are staying working from home. And I would say probably a good percentage of my clients are work from home. And they're just working from home and they're barely moving and they're developing a lot of issues that they never had before the pandemic. And then a lot of it is just due to lack of movement. Um, so anyway, so I say, I say that to say, I always like to give a solution right after I scare you. So I say all that to say, um, if you are working from home, again, back to the whole smartwatch thing, get a smartwatch, monitor your steps. So if four o'clock comes in like, man, I only got 2000 steps today. Um, you might want to go outside for a walk. Right. So be be intentional about how many steps that you're getting, how much movement you're getting um, on a day to day basis. I'm big on lunchtime walks also. So like break up the second half of your day with uh, with some with a walk. Now you want to go outside, get some sunlight, get some vitamin D, which is just good for so many different things. Yeah. So I'm really, really big on taking lunchtime walks uh, and getting some sunlight and just walking outside in general. Um, I like. I'm big on doing your cardio outside as opposed to inside just because we spend so much time inside. So as opposed to the treadmill, um, but go outside, get some sun as human beings, we need that sunlight. So, um, and you'll notice you'll feel so much better the second half of your day if you take that less time walk. So yeah, definitely give it a shot. Yeah, I agree. Outside movement is, is definitely better if you can uh, for sure out either morning or evening or, or at lunchtime, like you said, and you talked about smartwatch, you talked about some of the, the resources, some of the hip flexor, other stretches, we can, we can kind of highlight your social media at the end of this in a bit too. Um, any resources, other resources you recommend, like I'm thinking any specific desk setups or ergonomic setups uh, for people to learn more about? Uh, yeah, so as far as like desk setup, you, do you do you mean like uh, what are like some specific desks that people can get? 
Yeah, that that or other ergonomic resources, you know, to help their posture and 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 I guess also the movement resources. Anything else you recommend there? Yeah. So mm, so as far as like. I'm gonna give some specifics. So like for anyone that's having like a wrist pain or, or hand up issues, um, like I like the Microsoft Sculpt keyboard and mouse. That's my favorite ergonomic keyboard is Microsoft Sculpt. Um, so that's like a, more of like specifics. As far as chairs, I uh, like a uh, steel case has some good options. Herman Miller has some really good options in Hayworth. So I check out those brands. Those are probably my favorite, my favorite chair. And what I use is the steel case leap or the the um the Hayworth Zodi chair. So those are probably my favorite ergonomic chairs. As far as like the footrest, that's not a huge deal. There's like different footrests. Um yeah, so that's like more specific on equipment. Now, as far as like other resources, I know um the CIH I did a uh, more specific ergonomics um uh Mm-hmm. Like, uh, what was that like a workshop, um, which should still be on our YouTube page. So, um, where if you want more specific ergonomic tips, I know you can go and see that obviously. And then you can also contact me as well. Um, on my, uh, my, my okay. website is elevationhealthergo.com okay. or my Instagram is E H E underscore movement. So E H E underscore movement. I post some good tips on there as well. What does E H E stand for? Is that elevation health, uh, I think ergonomics, got it, got it. Great. Okay, we'll make sure to emphasize at the end as well. Outside of the workspace, Emil, what can we do more to move our bodies optimally? Good question. So, um, so outside of the workspace, just find something that you enjoy doing that has you moving, right? So everyone likes different things. So like, I still do a little bit of basketball. I do pull-ups. Um, I like like meditative stretching. So I, I, I do a full body stretch while I'm doing my deep breathing. And that also helps, but just find something that you like to do, right? That, that, that requires you to move, whether you go and bounce a ball, you go run with your kids, you take your dog out for a walk, just find ways to move, right? We are made to move as human beings. Um, and if you're just sitting around all day, that's one of the worst things you can do for your health It's just not move um so yeah just get creative find ways to move um i know a common thing that i always hear when people um they'll say like get shoulder pain or elbow issue and then they stop moving in general well you can still move your lower extremities still work so like don't stop working out don't stop going to the gym don't stop doing everything because your elbow what about your legs you can still go for a walk you can still work your legs um or vice versa if someone hurts their knee you can still do other stuff with your arms as well so never stop moving um, and find something that you enjoy doing that, uh, that, that, that helps you to move and be intentional about moving every day, be intentional right? about just finding ways to move and just create it, get your heart rate up regularly. Um, yeah, I would say that was the biggest thing. I think a number of, a number of people, are, you know, including myself are on social media and you see these people in these like, you know, amazing gym shorts and, you know, they're, they're, they're like sculpted, you know, they're like the you know, the magazine models or whatever. And I'm wondering about how this impacts our ability to even start moving. You know, like one of the common issues that I I find sometimes is sort of like, oh, I don't really feel like moving because I can't do it that well, but maybe we don't want to let perfect be the enemy of the good. Like, how do we just get started with movement? With movement. I think, yes, that's a good question. Yes, so it doesn't have to, I think it's really important to, uh, (coughs) excuse me, be patient with yourself, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. Just starting off with just some, just simply going out and walking regularly, right? You know, you don't, the goal doesn't have to be to be shredded and, and have these big pecs and biceps. Just the fact that you're getting out and walking and moving regularly, you're going to yeah. get some health benefit, right? So just be yeah. patient with yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I always say like 1%, just try to get 1% better every day, right? 1%, 2% better every day adds up a lot over a course of a year, right? So just kind of try to always just move forward um, and just try to get a little bit better every day. Step by step. And that, yeah. And, and like you said, something enjoyable, something you can do step by step that you can gradually increase one to 2% at a time. I know that Hisa works with a lot of people like this too. I imagine you too, people with, with chronic pain. What would you recommend for people with chronic pain, let's say, you know, kind of all over even, but then they want to increase movement? 
Yeah, so chronic pain. So that's an interesting one, right? Because um, it's almost like what comes first, the chicken and the egg, right? A lot of times people don't want to move because they have pain, right? But the problem is if you don't move, then you you then you get more tight, you get more stiff, you lose your range of motion, then you have pain, <laughs> right? So it's like, you don't want to move because so it's like, do you have pain because you're not moving or do you, or, or, or are you not moving? So which causes you to have pain? So it's like, it's like, which comes first? So, um, so back to that, um, I think it's important to just find ways to, that you can still move. So like if you again you have chronic pain in your in your legs for example or in your knees for example so then you can still do punches you can sit down you can do arm curls you can you can do stuff for your upper extremities so find things that you can do still that won't hurt right and that's kind of like what I specialize in so like post rehab fitness post rehab exercises so like um outside of just like physical therapy so a lot of my clients or patients like after they get discharged from physical therapy they can't they're not ready to go to the gym, but um, they, yeah, because they don't know what to do and they still have functional limitations. So like my specialty is supposed to rehab fitness and building strength and conditioning programs for people who have issues, right? And they're limited to what they can and can't do, but they still want to work out. So yeah. it's important to just find things that you can still do, right? So I've I realized there's a big gap there, right? Do you have the gym and you have physical therapy, but what about what's in the middle? Right. Um, and so, yeah, so it's important to just, again, find things that you can that you can do. Find a good coach who can give you tips and give you exercise that you can still do to also maintain. Right. So after you get discharged from rehab um, for an issue that you might have chronic pain for, you have to keep up your exercises. We know that um, Dr. He's and I was talking about this other day, but we know that over 90 percent of people fall off their their home exercise program within like 60 days. So like when we discharge patients from physical therapy, we give them a set of exercises and stretches to do. And so you have to keep these going because your issue is gonna come back, your, your, especially if you have like a pathology or like a uh, like actual structural issues. So this, these, by getting these certain muscles strong, that's going to help to decrease your symptoms, but you do have to maintain it. And so a lot of times people don't have that accountability um, to, and aren't able to maintain it, so that's, that's why they end up in physical therapy again, right? And it's, it's this whole cycle thing, but you so have to maintain. Having a coach would be really helpful. You know, oh, yeah. Sounds like. Yeah, having a coach to hold you accountable. People are four times more likely to to stick with an exercise program when you have somebody to hold you accountable. Yep. And, and there's a lot of great coaches out there. I know we have two health and wellness coaches here, Tony and Liz, who are amazing. And sometimes it goes back to mindset too. You know, we have Dr. Dan Gilman here, psychologist who's great and she actually specializes with chronic pain and sometimes there's a mindset of chronic pain that people you know can't kind of get up and move and so I, I just wanted to bring that up because you know there was a recent article in one of the major medical journals about arthritis and osteoarthritis and how you know we know that this is treated a lot of times with chronic Tylenol or NSAIDs and things like that which can actually make pain you know it, there's a short-term gain of reducing symptoms but a long-term you know, even a reduction in outcomes or rather worsening of the outcomes when that happened. So this study actually showed that the best treatment for arthritis was movement, was literally walking and the thing you said to keep those joints lubricated. And so it's kind of interesting that um, a lot of times, you know, people are like, well, I can't really move with chronic pain, but movement might be the best thing for them if, it, if done, you know, well and safely and in a professionally supervised way. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and then again, if you, for example, you have arthritis in your hands, you can just start with just open, going slow, right? Open them up, right? So a lot of times when you're not moving it at all, that's how they stiffen up. You start to get these different issues. So always keep moving, never stop. Um, that's just, that's just the worst thing that we can, that we can, that we can do. Um, like, um, I, I read a, an article the other day that was just saying that, um, how bed rest is probably one of the, the worst things that you can do for your body. Mm, yeah. And the reason is because you're not interacting with gravity right mm -hmm. so like we're always resisting gravity if i'm sitting up right now gravity is acting upon me right pulling me down to the center of the earth um and so i need to resist gravity right if i raise my arm i'm going against gravity and so and so if i'm just laying down all day just being sedentary so then it's like those muscles just just atrophy um so i know like astronauts when they come back from space um a lot of times again they've, they've lost like so much muscle mass because they don't have they don't interact with gravity um while they're up there so it's important to get up get your torso up and um, and resist gravity and 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 move and, and and for the listeners out there and for all of us you know i think that 
one of the one of the uh, purposes of this podcast is also to transform the consciousness around health and wellness. And so we're talking about work and we're talking about like sitting and we're talking about standing, but then how can we bake movement in to our day so that we just do it by default with that, even without cell phone reminders or computer reminders. I'd love to hear thoughts about how to kind of by default increase movement throughout the day. You know, maybe, maybe we all need to become uh, physical therapists and PTAs like you and he's a, you know, we can, then we're moving, you know, all the time, but a lot of us have jobs that sort of by default have a lot of sedentary or a lot of things where we're not moving. But I know for me, for instance, sometimes I'll be, you know, with patients on Zoom or something and I'll, you know, I'll realize, oh, I need to, I could stand during my visit or I could, I could even like do some squats with them and like I could demonstrate that. And that's actually helping the patient and myself too. Absolutely, yes. So find ways you can march in place. So again, if you're on a Zoom call, you can just stand up and march in place while you're on that call. You can yeah. stand up and just do some shoulder rolls, right? You can, yeah. again, if you have a, just a telephone call, maybe go out and take the call while you're walking. So it's just those little things that you can do to increase. And obviously, everyone knows um, the little things like parking farther, right? And then, and then so you can walk a little bit um, if you're if you're at a grocery store. Movement, let's, let's make movement the default, not the exception. Is that right? Yes, yeah. I like like that yes yes um but yeah definitely again it's i know it's easy for me to tell people that but again once you get started to work when you're stressed out and you're going 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 and you're locked in again before you know it the whole morning when you didn't sit so i definitely would recommend getting something to remind you the people who are who are best with it again you have some type of alert um because it's just you you just get away from it so easily so it's important to get to yeah, have something to remind you now, what now, Mia, what is the relationship between movement and activating those bones and muscles so that we can have good structure and then get really good biological function and breath work? What's the relation between movement and breath work? I'm wondering about that because you what you just said, it just came to mind, you know, we're kind of go, go, going all the time, right? And then and then we might be forgetting to breathe. And then of course, if we forget to breathe, we forget to move. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that connection. Yeah, I'm, I'm so I'm really big on breath work. I actually took a full week in seminar over 15 hours just on like the importance of breathing. Um, so breath work for chronic pain, right? Breath work for um, just like while you're stretching that helps to kind of like let let the muscles like relax better. Um, and without getting too technical into it, but like when you do like deep breathing through your diaphragm, it activates your vagus nerve, which calms down your organs and all these other things, right? And then um gets you out of that fight or flight state, right? So we're always kind of in that like sympathetic state where like we're always kind of flared up shallow breathing through your chest, where especially during the workday if you have a high stress job, your shallow breathing through your chest is uh, you're you're really tense. Um, but like and these are the times that you actually need to breathe the most just because one you need to get that oxygen to your brain oxygen to every cell in your body so you want to you want to take those deep that the deep breathing not only for the oxygen but also to calm down your sympathetic nervous system activate that parasympathetic nervous system um so like on my laptop right here i have a sticky note that just says just breathe right so all throughout the day i'm getting that reminder especially when i'm stressed or feeling overwhelmed i just stop for a second take some deep breaths um, like in through my nose, I hold and out through my mouth, just take that, that couple of minutes. And I feel so much better afterwards. Um, so I think I can't stress the importance of like, just being mindful of your breathing during the day. It's so, so, so important. And it's something I think that people do, just don't do enough. Yeah, I agree. And, and we know that, you know, breathing activates, like you said, that lower third of the lungs and it activates like 50% more oxygen when you take that big expansion of the diaphragm when you, um, yeah, I guess when you, uh, you know, inhale, exhale, and that diaphragm is going up and down a lot more when you're taking those deep breaths. What do you, what do you think about the um, relationship between while we're doing, say, intentional, quote, unquote, exercise or movement and breathing? We know, for instance, that exercise will activate the, you know, blood pressure will go up, heart rate will go up, we're going to get that adrenaline surging, the muscles are firing and all that. Um, how should we breathe when we move? And in other words, should we do deep breathing? Is there another type of breathing there? Yeah. So it's important to understand that when we like the human body is so amazing, right? So like when you're walking or you're doing certain exercises, your body naturally starts to breathe harder because your body's saying, I need more oxygen to complete this task. Right. So that's why naturally your body starts to breathe. That's that's literally why we breathe harder. Like our heart starts to beat faster. Your body's saying, I need more 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 oxygen to yeah. meet these demands that yeah. were that that uh that of my body right so 
so so that's why it's important that that exercise is somewhat stressful to the body right so like if you're exercising and it's completely comfortable you're not going to get a whole lot of gain right so you need your body needs to be able to say like okay in my day-to-day -day life like that's why you want to add that good stress like to your lungs let your lungs and heart work a little bit so walk at a pace or exercise at a pace that your heart that is a little bit uncomfortable so you want to become comfortable being uncomfortable because what happens is your body says okay um, and it's called the law of imposed demand. So you impose these demands on your body and then your body says like responds to those demands by saying, I need to be able to, to, to lift more weight. So I'm going to get stronger, right? You, you, if you're doing, if I'm doing bicep curls and taking it out of what I normally would lift, right? So if I could normally do this, but now I load a 20 pound weight and I'm curling that 20 pound weight. And now my body's mm. going to say, I need to be on a day-to-day -day basis. I need to be able to curl a 20 pound weight. So like you're going to break apart that muscle. And then when your body sleeps, you get good sleep and you recover. That muscle grows back stronger, um, but your body grows back more resilient. And so forth. So it's important to understand that when you exercise, it should be a little bit, um, it should be a little bit stressful, right? Like good stress on your body, where it's taking you past your comfort zone, the strength training, whether it's the cardio. Uh, and so you should need to, like, if you're doing your cardio, you you want to be able to breathe a little bit harder. If it, because a lot of times when people when they start to do exercise, as soon as they start to breathe harder, they stop. When that's actually what you want to go into. Now, obviously, down this like of this, uh, you also want to be safe again to make sure that anytime you start a good exercise program, that you that you have a strong heart, that you're cleared by your doctor in in order to to do these things because you do want to again, it is going to be somewhat strenuous on your on your systems. Um, but you yeah, but you do want it to be uncomfortable when you exercise. So I, I thought of something and it could be funny or not, but uh, this idea of no work from movement, no perks from movement, right? No perks, no perks. <laughs> what do you think about that? So, I mean, you're essentially trying to work um, when you move and not just like be at the status quo because you're really trying to build that cardiorespiratory fitness, increase the oxygen capacity, increase the muscle mass, but you're not going to do that by doing the same thing that you're doing, you know, over and over. Um, so yeah, no work, no perks. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Or people always say kind of like no pain, no gain, yeah. all that type of stuff yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. Um, so yeah. definitely it should be uncomfortable, right? So, um, and definitely when it, when you say no pain, no gain, it's important to understand that like, like, like if you should never, like I always tell my patients, you never want okay. understand good pain versus bad pain, right? Okay. You never like if I work out the next day, um, if I do a bunch of pull ups or chest press, like I want my muscles to be a little bit sore. That, that that's how I know okay. I really worked it. But you never okay. want joint pain, okay. right? So like okay. so it's, it's okay, okay for your thighs to be a little sore, your butt muscles, all okay. these muscles, but you never want your your elbow and your knee. I never like shoulder pain. I never like neck pain. I never like knee pain, hip. So you never want joint pain, but you do want some if you have some muscle soreness that's okay so understand good good fatigue and like kind of good pain versus bad pain okay so the joints versus muscles is important there got it um just just going on the lines of that um do you recommend any sort of like hydration or, or nutrition post movement if someone is taking a break during the work day or if they're just kind of at home trying to keep active whether or not they're quote unquote working or not what what are the what are the some of the key things that you recommend there in terms of sort of optimal optimal uh, nutrition or hydration I think post post some sort of movement. Yeah, so so I'm not a uh, I'm not a nutritionist, so with I can't get too deep into that. But like for me, um, like you want to make sure you're drinking a ton of water during the day, right? So for those who are listening, uh, hopefully you have, you always have like a tall water bottle at your station. So I always encourage everyone to have like water at the there station. Yep. Awesome. <laughs> yep. So yeah, you want to encourage yourself to drink water, stay hydrated throughout the work day. So always be, always drink water, especially if you're working from home, you have no excuse <laughs> to not be drinking a lot of water. So stay hydrated. It's good for your brain. It's good for every cell in your body. So stay hydrated, especially days that you're going to work out. If you drink a lot of water, no days you'll notice you have more energy um so yeah so important to make sure you're drinking water now um post-workout like i like to do smoothies um i'm big on smoothies like protein shakes i try to do i try to stay away from um from yeah. anything dairy so i do a vegan protein mm -hmm. powder I, I i do a lot of um i really only do fish um but outside of that i, I don't really do like any dairy or whey so for those who get like drink whey protein like that is still like kind of milk derivative so um, so that's just my preference. Uh, I know some people actually have to have dairy for the nutritional needs uh, and so forth. But um, so, yeah, so I like protein. 
every single day i uh, i do a smoothie with um i which this is a little hack so what you can do um if you have like a little blender i have a big bag of mixed frozen fruit right and so all i do is just grab a handful of fruit i throw it in a blender i grab a handful of spinach i throw it in a blender and i put in a blender with water so that way um i get my fruits and i get my vegetables and sometimes i'll throw some like benny fiber or extra fiber in there too and i drink it every day i drink a smoothie i think i only missed three days all of last year are you adding in the protein powder to the smoothie as well or yeah sometimes um i don't know like it like there's different recipes uh, it, it, i don't really like the taste so much like a lot of times i'll do it separate like i'll do like the the protein smoothie and then i'll do yeah. like my fruit smoothie because I, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. really it, like the it, taste it does like and it makes the color weird too when you when you put the protein powder in yeah yeah, Got so it. I don't really, the only time I'll do the protein powder with my smoothie is if I'm doing like peanut butter, banana, and then I'll do like a vanilla protein powder. But like if I'm doing fruits, any other fruits, like for me, I don't really like it. But there's a lot of recipes online. Mm -hmm. Find a recipe that uh, that you like. And uh, But yeah, for daily smoothies are really, really good to uh, to get a lot of those fruits and vegetables. And you can just drink it and you get a lot of those same benefits. Um, and when I do my smoothies, I probably put a whole salad worth of spinach like in that. And I can consume it so easily because I'm drinking it. But I put a whole salad worth of spinach in there. And, and of course, and, and of course, you need the, the foods that are high in dietary nitrates, like spinach, to increase the nitric oxide, which is going to help circulation. It's going to help get that blood flow to the muscles and, and the bones. You know, so I think that, that we know that everything is related to sleep, the mindset, the community, of course, uh, movement, and then nutrition. You know, everything, everything is all related here. And, but we know that really important you know, today. Thank you so much, Emil, for coming on, talking about structural health, bone and joint health, ergonomic health. Um, we have a closing question that's a little bit more kind of one of these, uh, could be more of a fun question, but uh, what, what are things that you do, um, if you don't mind uh, sharing with us, that, that you kind of, that center you in life and that bring you joy, both, you know, I guess, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually? That's a great question. So, so my morning routine, every morning I wake up um, and the first thing I do, I say my gratitudes, right? And I say all the things that I'm grateful for, my daughter, uh, my health, both my parents still being alive, um, the ability to serve others. Um, like I generally enjoy, I love what I do. Um, and I love a lot of people who wake up and they're miserable. Every day I don't have that feeling. Um, so I do that. Um, I do my pull-ups. I have a pull-up bar at home. So I do my pull-ups to kind of get my body up. I go on my balcony and I do some deep breathing. I do my meditation. I visualize my day. Like I visualize how I want my interactions to be. I visualize, for example, this 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 uh, podcast, right? I visualize that I want to be a light um, to the world. I want to shine, and um, for those around me, I want to serve. And um, like I, I visualize, like like I don't really get like I do podcasts like this, uh, and when I do classes and things like that, I don't really get nervous because instead of thinking about um, like what I don't want to happen or I visualize what I want to happen. I visualize how do I want people to feel when they leave my, like that interaction um, with me, right? I visualize like what's their biggest takeaway. So I always kind of think about what I want to happen as opposed to what I don't. So I visualize my whole day in the morning while I do my deep breathing. Um, sometimes I'll do some morning yoga or, or morning stretches. So just something to kind of get my body just like kind of calm um, and then I, and then I start my day, I make my to-do list and then I just try to check it off as I, um, throughout the day. Um, as far as like for movement as well, like, um, I have a, uh, like I said, I just, I have a three-year-old daughter, which is, uh, it's great. Cause she loves, uh, she loves, she's very athletic and so she loves to move. So like, we always go outside. So that's our thing, man. It's, uh, we'll go like hiking, we'll awesome. go. And that's uh, Dr. He's daughter too. Like sometimes we'll get them nice. together to do nice. stuff, but like we, we kick their butts, man. Um, so it's great because uh, I could, I couldn't do probably a bunch of tea parties all day. So that's great. Man. I love that she loves to move. So we'll go out to the track. We'll go, we'll play soccer. We'll play basketball, we'll play baseball. We'll go, we'll go and do walking paths. We'll ride our scooters. So that's my way of, of just getting movement. Um, so yeah, man, get creative, find ways that you, that you, that you, that you, uh, find things you love to do. But that, that's that's probably how I move most. <clears throat> yeah, and and I just want to share, you know, what just to echo what you said. Um, I also have a morning routine. I really think that movement is the foundation of that. You know, getting getting everything moving. You're really moving physically, but you're also kind of moving the emotions and the mind and spirit when you do that. So 
we have to get beyond the mind-body split, which is actually from Descartes, Descartes, I think, back in the 1500s, right? This is all about mind-body connection. That's what integrative health is about. But then you mentioned Hisa, so uh, just to mention too to you that we're also taco buddies. We like to sometimes go out and eat some tacos. So I have to ask you this as another fun question. If you were at a taco bar and you could have unlimited toppings, whatever you want to put on it, what, what are your kind of three main ingredients in that taco? <laughs> never Ooh, asked anyone on this podcast. I thought never asked anyone so, so, on this podcast. So, I so, so I like so again. I, yeah, again, I, I mostly do fish. Nice. So I like fish yeah. tacos. Nice. Um, uh, I had a really good fish taco the day. Normally, I, I, I try to avoid dairy, but you could do like a slaw, okay. Okay. like jalapenos, uh, slaw, and then um, what else do they put on fish tacos? So like jalapenos, they do like a like a, like a special little slaw, like red onions, uh, and then like some some hot sauce. Like I, I like there's a lot of spicy. That, there's actually that chain around here, literally called Fish Taco. Have you eaten at that before? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. Great. Well, thank you so much, Emil, for coming on. A lot of topics we just covered today, and um, let's talk about just how listeners can learn more about you and work with you. Awesome. Yeah. So obviously, again, I'm a, I'm a clinician at uh, CIH. So I work close with uh, with Dr. Hiza. So definitely, if you are a uh, CIH member, absolutely, you can uh, you can contact me or reach me through the I guess through the front desk. And then if you're not, um, you can always contact me again through elevationhealthergo.com. Uh, that is my uh, my website. Uh, my Facebook is Elevation Health um, and Ergonomics. Or I think I have like the like the short thing is e h e underscore movement for instagram and facebook e h e underscore movement so like my whole brand yeah. is movement right so it's like encouraging people to move more that's it so it's, it's very very important to move more so so e h e underscore movement elevation health ergo my what my uh, email is elevation health at yahoo.com so yeah i love to uh to help please uh, let me know if you have any other questions that i didn't get to help today Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Emil. Move motion is the new lotion, as we said a couple times here. And uh, we'll chat soon. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for the opportunity, Dr. Wong. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. If you enjoyed this conversation, please take a moment to leave us a review. It helps our podcast to reach more listeners. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss our next episodes and conversations. And thank you so much again for being with us.